Hello everyone, I'm Michael Vance, and today I'm going to show you a nice little trick I learned some years back that is essential to know if you want to model spirally Fibonacci-based plants, flowers, and cones like the ones shown here. Using just a MoGraph cloner object, a couple of MoGraph step effectors, and an angle of 137.5 degrees, or as it's otherwise known, the golden angle. I will show you how you can identify the different spirals that can be found within the plant. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8. This is the Fibonacci sequence, closely related to the golden ratio and the golden angle, with each number appearing within the Fibonacci flower and plant in some very remarkable ways that can be viewed directly within Cinema itself. So without further ado, let's dive into our Cinema project and see how you can make this math work for you. Let's start by making a new project in Cinema and save it so we can save as we go and recover the file if anything happens. And let's rename the file to something meaningful to us such as Fibonacci Flower Tutorial MV1 or use your own initials. I personally always initial my files to distinguish them from files I get elsewhere. First thing we're going to do is create a MoGraph cloner object from the MoGraph menu at the top of your screen. And we're going to rename that cloner object to Flower Cloner. Next, let's go to the Create menu and create a sphere object. Place the sphere object as a child of the Flower Cloner object. And we're going to make sure that we are in Model Mode on the left side of the screen and choose the Scale tool. Now, scale the sphere object a little smaller so that the clones don't crash into one another. And finally, let's rename the sphere to Petal Sphere. Now, choosing the cloner object again, we're going to go into the Attributes Manager here and click in the Object tab, where you will find this option to change the mode from Linear, as shown here, to, in this case, Radial. And since we want the clones facing upwards, we're going to change the plane setting from XY to XZ. Next, let's change the cloner count to 100 and increase the radius enough so that the clones don't overlap, say 1000. As you can see, the clones are evenly spaced to one another because by default, the cloner start angle is set to 0 and the end angle is set to 360 degrees. Now I want you to fool a little with the start and the end angles so you can observe exactly what they do as so. As you can see, increasing the start angle or decreasing the end angle reduces the total radius that the clones cover in our circle. We're going to return to this in a minute, but for now, let's reset the start angle to zero and the end angle to 360. Next thing we're going to do is make sure the flower cloner object is still selected or selected again in the object manager and go once more to the MoGraph menu to the effector drop down and choose Step. This creates a step effector which was automatically assigned to the flower cloner object. Select the flower cloner object again and make sure the step effector appears in the cloner's effectors tab. If it doesn't, drag the step effector into the effectors list like so. Now, notice that the clones at the end of the circle are bigger than the clones at the beginning of the circle. This is because if you choose the step effector and look in its parameter tab, you will see that scale is checked under transform here. Try increasing and decreasing the scale value and observe for a moment how that impacts our model. Next, uncheck the scale value like so and turn on position instead. As before, I invite you to play with the different settings to see exactly how the step effector steps through your clones 
and moves them in the selected directions. Once you have played with that for a moment, we're going to reset the X and Y settings to zero and change the Z setting to minus 1000. And before we move on, let's rename our step effector to position step. This distinguishes it from the other step effector we're going to add later. Now, the result we have in our model so far is a spiral like so, but this still isn't giving us much of the Fibonacci pattern we're familiar with from daisies, sunflowers, and the like. Now here's where things start to get interesting. Select again your flower cloner and start to increase the end angle setting that we played with earlier. You'll notice a lot of interesting designs along the way, but I want you to keep going until you finally reach exactly 13,750 degrees. Now at last, we see the first formation of our Fibonacci flower, and we can make out some of the familiar spirals. So why 13,750? Because 137.5 degrees is the golden angle, the optimal angle for which certain leaves, branches, and petals grow so as not to collide into one another to have the most room and to get the most sunlight. And we are offsetting each clone by exactly that value. Since our clone count is 100, the total number of clones multiplied by the golden angle, 137.5, results in the value 13,750. Now I want you to again change the end angle back to 137.5 and multiply that value by our clone count number 100 and we get 13,750 as before. That's the faster way of doing it. Now since our clones are more spread out than before, let's change our clone count to 300 and fix the end angle to match our new clone count by multiplying 300 by 137.5 in the end angle setting. Now we're starting to get a really nice result that we can tweak further by fine tuning the distribution of the clones here using the spline graph found in the step effectors effector tab here like so. Things are looking pretty good, but all the clones are the exact same size and that isn't really how things grow normally. So let's again select our flower cloner object and add one more step effector from the MoGraph menu. This time, we will keep the scale value and enter a value of minus 0 0.7. This will make the clones at the end of the step range, the ones in the center of our model, smaller. So we'll adjust our petal sphere size accordingly, like so. And lastly, let's tweak both of our effectors, effector splines, to get everything just right. And there you have it, a pretty nice result and a faithful rendering of how these plants grow in nature. For the sake of orderliness, let's change the name of our step effector to scale step. And since we've come so far, let's again save our project. Lastly, we're going to select our flower cloner object again and peek inside the transform tab and change the display setting to index. This will allow us to see the index value of each clone in our model. Let's also change the color setting of our clones here so we can better read the index values in the viewfinder like so. Now let's zoom into the clones and study their index values like so. Specifically, let's navigate to clone number one. And I want you to notice how the four adjacent clones to clone number one are clone 14, clone 22, clone 35, and clone 56. Now notice the difference between one and 14 is 13. The difference between one and 22 is 21, the difference between 1 and 35 is 34, and the difference between 1 and 56 
is 55. 13, 21, 34, and 55. These are all numbers found within the Fibonacci sequence. Now, if you keep going in the direction of the adjacent clones, such as here, you will see that the spiral goes from 1 to 22 to 43 to 64 to 85 and so on, with each step being exactly 21 units. Thus, this spiral is known as the spiral of 21. Likewise, if you follow in the direction from clone 1 to clone 35 and keep going, you will see that the next clone is 69, then 103, then 137, 171, and so on. Each 34 units greater than the last. Thus, this spiral is called the spiral of 34. Likewise, it is easy to find the spirals of 8 and the spirals of 55 in the same manner. In fact, if your model contains a sufficient number of clones, you can find spirals for every number in the Fibonacci sequence. But here is where things get really interesting. If you count closely, you will find that the model we just created not only has these spirals of 8, 13, 21, and 55, but if you count closely, you will see that there are exactly 8 spirals of 8, 13 spirals of 13, 21 spirals of 21, and 55 spirals of 55. And that, my friends, is about as close as you will ever come in nature to reflecting the thesis put forward in Carl Sagan's fictional book, Contact. If you've ever read it, the book, not the movie, it is suggested that the creators of the universe embedded coded messages for us deep within non-rational numbers, such as pi and phi, to prove their existence and encourage us in our quest for knowledge of the universe within. Thank you for watching, and please follow me for upcoming tutorials on how to use the golden angle and other angles in more detail to make sunflowers, daisies, gerberas, succulents, and cones like these shown here. Thank you.